following program is a special presentation of VH1 Classic. Oh, there's a lot of terrific things you can say about Cindy Lauper. She's talented, she's funny, she's a passionate perfectionist, which in turn makes her a hell of a singer. Yes, Cindy is all those things and more. But the best thing about her that I can share with you, it's that she's going to be hanging with me in the VH1 Classic Studio for the next hour. Wait, it gets even better. Cindy's going to be performing not one, not two, not even three, but four songs. One of the things we get a genuine kick out of here at VH1 Classic is watching an artist we've come to love over the years rediscover their own music with a bold stroke of security and confidence. When it's done right, well, it's as if we're enjoying those classics for the very first time, which is exactly what Cyndi Lauper accomplishes on the body acoustic. Only an artist with her unique ability could weave a group of guests as varied as Ani DeFranco, Shaggy, Jeff Beck, Jeff Beck! and Sarah McLaughlin into her classics, while managing to give each song a brave and wonderful new feel. Now, coming up this hour, you're going to hear for yourself exactly what I'm talking about. Don't you worry. While she was here, I also sat with Cindy for a bit of a chat. And here's the first of those moments. By the way, one very endearing thing you should know up front about Cindy. She's an interviewer's dream come true. You ask her one question, and you get many answers. The Body Acoustic is such a wonderful album. It's so lovely. Th uh, you know, it's great. You have two wonderful new songs on the album. Thank you. But uh, in addition to that, you have reworkings of some of your biggest hits. It's not a greatest hits album because there's new stuff on there, mm -hmm. but I'm interested to find out what motivated you, uh, what was your inspiration for this reworking of these songs? I, I happened to be doing these benefits, different benefits. When you do a benefit, you, you have to keep the costs down, so you, you have to think of, oh, well, I could bring my dulcimer, I can play that, and I can play this on my guitar, and I can, well, let me figure it out. And then I, I started to think, well, it'd be nice if I had a few more players, just one or two, you know, and then it became like this unplugged right. kind of thing, because it's not like folk music. Right. Um, and even though the dulcimer is a folk instrument, you know, there's another class that would be thrown out of, you know, I wasn't because the teacher was kind of a rocker himself, so he understood. Um, but I don't play it traditionally. You have an unconventional. Well, you know, I guess I think it could fit. There's another guy that plays a Tennessee music box in a heavy metal band, a bowed Tennessee music box, which is really great sound. Mm -hmm. I have one, but I have to adjust it. The it kind of warped somehow because of the fret is the fretboard. You, it's just um, drones and. It's, it's just interesting. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if you listen to early Led Zeppelin, he, he was playing mandolin on stuff, but, and maybe dulcimer, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, in my head, always equated to, like, that rock and roll, Led Zeppelin, -y, or Joni Mitchell. Well, that's folk, but mm -hmm. somewhere in my head, that stuff like rock, folk, soul, Hip hoppy thing comes together. All goes together. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, it does to and, me. And however, you play the dulcimer, you make it work beautifully. And we oh, get to hear you, you play the dulcimer a bit on this uh, album. And there's some bit all through. Yes, I know. This is the first time, but you know, because I started out playing an instrument and singing. I started by playing guitar and singing. I always played the weird stuff. It's so funny because now I'm right back to playing the weird stuff and singing. You know, it's just it's how I started. And I guess I stopped because I thought I could sing much better than I could play. Mm -hmm. And and also there there was such, um, you know, because I didn't play rock, you know, I didn't put it through an amplifier, I didn't, you know, work on sound, I just worked on other things, you mm -hmm. know. People would always say, ah, uh, folk, you know, ah, oh, you folk, you know, and then I liked rock, so I stopped. I just, you know, and for a while I thought I couldn't sing. I had to go on an audition and make a big mistake, and I, um... I had to, uh, instead of jumping the fifth, it was I Gotta Use My Imagination, the Gladys Knight song. Mm -hmm. You know, they, it was a show band. So I wanted to be a background singer. Oh, my so, God. But he had to sing. So I, I, instead of doing what she did, I made a mistake. I jumped, jumped the octave. But I was up there, and it was loud. And I was like, I can't stop. 
So I just kept singing, and the look on their faces was like, you know, where did, where did the sound come from? And tell you the truth, I was thinking the same thing. I had no idea that I could sing like that. I didn't know. And that was the birth of the... That started, oh, I could sing loud. And they said, she's so unusual. No, 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 no. <laughs> Those were way before Oh, okay, that. okay, okay. Those were the cover bands. Oh, okay, okay. And I was like, what's wrong with her? She, she moves like a boy. She, she looks like a boy. Can't she just stand still and sing? You know. Ah. Well, getting back to this album, on this album, another... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, I know how you are. Woo. Okay, Cindy. yeah. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, good. No, but let's talk a little bit about the collaborations, because you're working with some really cool people. Yeah. Uh, did you bring all these people to the party? Uh, these are my friends, except for Adam. I, I never met Adam. Um, I knew of Vivian oh, through amazing. Lisa. She's wonderful. She's and Sarah McLaughlin. Singer. Well, Sarah, I knew. And... Uh, She's, you know, she was in the studio, she came to the studio and she started singing. I showed her the parts. We, we talked. I, sh I played her Water's Edge because she remembered that song. And I just thought, she's magical and it's mm -hmm. effortless. Mm -hmm. It's just effortless. So pretty. You go together well because you both are like that. That's, it's a wonderful collaboration. I don't know. I get nervous before. I don't know. She's not like me. I'm a wreck. I always think, oh my God, you know what if I You're too hard on yourself, Cindy. <laughs> you see? You no. see? <laughs> there are a lot more laughs to come with Cindy. But right now, well, right now, I'd like to share with you one of the four amazing performances from Cindy and her band that had happened just a few moments earlier that afternoon on this very stage. to take courage. 
Okay, how cool is Cindy that she can not only write and sing beautiful music, but that she can also play it on an instrument like the dulcimer? Let's return now to more of our great conversation as Cindy gives VH1 Classic some props. I, I get excited because this is a real last bastion mm -hmm. of music. I mean, you don't have music shows anymore. That's right. You don't. Everything's a reality show, um, and there are very few musicians mm -hmm. left who just sit and play. Well, you can, and there are plenty of musicians who sit and play. But because of the computer, I guess they sit and play the computer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which is an instrument. Um, but I think it's great to go back to the live situation and go from the organic place mm -hmm. because if you lose sight of that you know and the joy of music see when i was a little kid i saw this movie harold and maud mm -hmm. and she had a closet full of instruments and she couldn't play them but she would take them out and play them and i always loved that and i never had a pot to piss in if i may say that when i was a kid so <laughs> when i became famous and i had some money i went to a music store and I bought all these old instruments and the dulcimer was one of them. And I get the Mel Bass books and Chrissy Hine was on the phone and was, we started talking and she said, oh, you bought, what'd you buy? Because apparently everybody feels like this, right. people who love music. And uh, I said, well, I got a dulcimer, I got a trombone, I got a violin, I got, but the violin kind of went to the wayside, but the dulcimer didn't. And I also bought, um, what I thought was an auto hop, but it was really a zither. And I wrote, you don't know on that zither. Wow. And not that I'm a great player of anything, right. but I take these textures and instruments and I allow them to write the song. They'll dictate the song. The dulcimer, I wrote, Water's Edge on. And Water's Edge, the scale of Water's Edge, um, now I can't get River out of my head, but the uh, Water's Edge is, I saw the water shimmer. That's that's a scale on that's the scale on the dulcimer. Uh -huh. So that's where the melody came from. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And it was also keyboards, but these instruments, if you allow them and you just listen uh -huh. to them, they'll lead you. That's right. And there's not enough dulcimer in the world today. Oh, there's hundreds of dulcimer <laughs> clubs, doll. <laughs> Are they really? Hundreds. Really? Oh, it's going to be big. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. They're going to take off this Dulcima thing. I think so. No, no that's not. what's great about this record, though, because honestly, you get to hear a, a, a lot of the Dulcima on this record. Well, I got to play and sing. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I'm playing Dulcima music. Right. I just like the fifths and the drone and the, the odd timing of it. But do Dulcima plays play like that? No. Would I probably get my butt kicked out of the class or the little club that travels and they play all the old songs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they'd ask me to leave because... who's making the dough? What? That's right. <laughs> yeah. And you're getting that dulcimer name out there, too. There is much more to come with Cindy during this special hour-long Hanging With, including a new song from Cindy that'll have you fallen in love all over again. Welcome back to this special one-hour expanded hanging with featuring the one and the only Cindy Lauper. The stage at Atlantic City's Taj Mahal Hotel and Casino was the place, and decades rock live was the show. Cindy Lauper, along with featured guests Velvet Revolver Scott Weiland, Shaggy, Pat Monahan of Train, and Ani DeFranco, combined the music of yesterday and today for a concert experience that is singularly VH1 Classic which, of course, is the only place you can enjoy all the fun. Check out vh1classic.com for showtimes and more information about Decades Rock Live, Cindy Lauper. And here's Cindy's take on the project. Decades Rock Live. This uh -huh. is a show that I can't stop watching on VH1 Classic. Uh, it, great show. How hard was it for, you to, to, for them to get you to do that one? No, I... I wanted to do it. They said, you know, it was like the record. It was a party. Right. They were all my friends. Right. And I knew Shaggy... Um, from Holland and he did the CD and I said oh you gotta have Shaggy 
He'd be so much fun. And, um, and he even gives you a piggyback ride. No, I jumped on his back. He was shocked. <laughs> I know. He it was, was a good sport. Funny. It was very, well, you know, he was, he's a nut. You know, and it was fun. And in the spirit of fun, I jumped on his back. But we were laughing. And then he started doing some kind of crazy dance. It was so funny. I was laughing so hard. You two are great together because your voice is high and his voice is low. And you guys are playing. It's like the seesaw. It's beautiful. Oh, so really fun. Fast. And that show, what a great stage. You're all over it. You work the crowd. You really put on a great show. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, you just, you know, I, can't, I don't never know. If it's going to be great, you know, and you, the hardest thing is just get rid of the third eye and try really hard to make it not to pay attention and, and be there in that space right then, in that moment, and let, let the spirit drive you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have a heart attack when you, before, I do before I go, and then, then you, you can only be the best you can be. You can never be somebody else. And that's always a problem. You know, I always have to like come to terms with, you know, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that. And it's like, what if it's not so good, you know? But you go out and you do it and you tr I try and connect. I like to break the wall. I don't like to have the band just necessarily back there. I like to, we are, mm -hmm. you know, we are the world. We are the bands. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I kill myself. Um, no, but um, but you make it fun. You make wait, it fun. It starts work, but you make it fun. You gotta have, you know. And in the end, the not for nothing. But it is music. How mm -hmm. bad could it be? That's right. Okay, now remember, VH1Classic.com has all your Decades Rock Live information. It's such a great show, I'm telling you. Cindy's got a lot on her musical plate these days, including, of course, her sensational new CD, The Body Acoustic, which features a new song that, personally, I am just crazy about. Yeah. Well, let's get back to the, new, okay. to the new album, The Body Acoustic. Two new songs on the record, both of which are absolutely beautiful. Um, uh, Above the Clouds with oh. Jeff Beck. Oh, my God. But I'll Be Your River. Yeah. Oh, the most romantic love song. I mean, really, if you don't mind, I have to read a little bit of the lyric. This is embarrassing for me, but stay with me. If you need water, I'll be your river. Like a wave, I'll come over you. If you need someone to fall into, I'll be your river. And my love will carry you through. What space were you in when you were writing this one? That's like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. You just make yourself. Um, no, um, no, this I always tears. That's why in the, in, in the other song, Above the Clouds, I always say, stings my ears and tears my eye. Because just this eye always is tearing. But no, it, it is, it's weird. It's just that's the way it goes. Um, no, uh, I wrote that for David. Aww. Uh, my husband. Um, wrote that a couple of years ago. And of course, you know, like every songwriter, I was tortured with, you can't start the, the song with you. Right. You have to start it with I. So then I was like really messed up. And then I thought, oh, I gotta, can't start it with you. Had to start it with I. But meanwhile, I, I was so eager to please. I, I, I could just step back, you know, because now my friends laugh at me. And they go, yeah, you are the sunshine of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been done. Yeah, I know. I was just an idiot. So you, it would have been, you'll be my river. Is that what you're saying? No. I no. wasn't going to change that. It was just the first line. But oh. It, it was like pulling the needle, pulling the thread from a sweater. I see. Sometimes you can change a song. But sometimes you can never change a song. Like Fearless. Mm hmm when I was doing Fearless, Fearless came about, but I couldn't change it because if I did, every time I tried to change it, because the chorus was the chorus, it was like, um, but if I was fearless, could I be a reckless friend? And if I was helpless, uh, could you be the one comes rushing in, right? Mm -hmm. And I was saying, that's not a chorus. I gotta write a real chorus. So then I'd go back and try and make more, and it was like, this song can't take anymore. This is what it is. You know, it just has to be what it is. Mm -hmm. So it was an odd song, but it was some. It was one of those songs that was really, was really struck a chord in me. Almost like those kind of songs and those kind of words. It's not like you're, um, you're aware sometimes that you're writing that. You... You just write, and for me, a wave coming over you. I love water, and I thought, 
you know, when emotions are like that, so you get a wave of emotions or you, you wave a passion, it's, it comes over you like a wave. So I thought, you know, if you want to be, and I, I put my love will carry you through because because I wanted to be there for him, you mm -hmm. know, so. That's beautiful. It's the new romantic song of our generation. That's my prediction. <laughs> and now, yet another great performance from Cindy and her band. One of the two new songs from the body acoustic, I'll Be Your River. Now, this is the one that's going to have you fallen in love all over again. Joining Cindy on stage here at the VH1 Classic Studio, as she does on the CD, is truly sensational Columbia Records recording artist Vivian Green, whose second album, Vivian, was released last year. If you need water, I'll be your river.
Okay, so far during this special one-hour edition of Hangin' With, you've enjoyed two beautiful acoustic performances by Cyndi Lauper, one of her classics, True Colors, and the other of the new and achingly beautiful I'll Be Your River. Both songs can be found on Cindy's must-have new CD, The Body Acoustic. Proving not all musicians are created equal, Cindy shows she has the right stuff by soaring on acoustic reworkings of some of her classics, as well as on two new songs. But a Cindy Lauper classic you won't find on The Body Acoustic, Change of Heart, which is included on the essential Cindy Lauper. Oh, yes, I can see you're two steps ahead of me as usual. Yes, it's true. Change of Heart was one of the four songs Cindy wanted to perform when she visited the VH1 Classic studio. And I'm proud to say, here it is for you now.
<laughs> okay, if you've been paying close attention, you heard me say that Cindy performed four songs when she visited the VH1 Classic Studio, right? Well, you've heard three. What could be the fourth? Well, this much I can tell you right now. It's one of her classics, and let's just say it's been reimagined in a way that'll completely blow your socks off. So stick around. It's coming up in just a few minutes. Aware, aware does the time go, huh? We're close to wrapping up this special hour-long edition of Hangin' With, featuring the vibrant and unique words and music of Cindy Lauper. I hope you've enjoyed this hour as much as I have, because I truly have. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There are times when this is absolutely the best gig in the world. All hour, we've been highlighting Cindy's terrific new project, The Body Acoustic, on which she reimagines some of her biggest classics in ways both innovative and fresh. I know, earlier I was teasing you about one of those classics featured on The Body Acoustic that gets a whole new sound, right? Well, I wasn't making it up, my friends. See if you recognize this little ditty from days past.
Okay, hot or way hot? You tell me. We were all just dying here in the VH1 Classic Studio during that performance. Honestly, there is no greater thrill for us than watching a true musician enjoy themselves at work. And Cindy is nothing if not a true musician. I, I appreciated doing this little show and I appreciated doing an album where I could actually just sit and play and go back to my roots, who I am, mm -hmm. and, um, and be able to, uh, to experience as an older musician that I've come full circle, that I was able to sing on a song that Jeff Beck played. Right. And write with Jeff Beck, because the truth is, when I was a kid, Jeff Beck, Rod sure. Stewart, that, you listen to the truth record, that was a quintessential great you bet. record. And you always dreamed that someday you were going to be as good as that. And to be able in your lifetime, I don't think I'm Rod Stewart, trust me. I used to sit in the bathtub getting ready for the gig, trying to rasp my voice, you know, and then you <laughs> read in the paper, oh, he drinks and he blah, 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 you know, and it's like, oh, that's how he... <laughs> Gets that sound. I can't drink. I get sick. I don't I think like that's it. That's funny. But, I'd know. like to hear, hear you try to sound like that. That's very funny. Well, I was in a well, cover band. You can come here and play this kind of music anytime you'd like. You have it's an open door policy. All right. I just want to let you know that. Now, earlier in this hour, I used words like brave and bold to describe Cindy, and those words weren't accidental choices. Here's why. With all that Cindy's accomplished in her career, stepping onto a creative high wire isn't necessarily something she has to do. But if she didn't open herself up to that kind of creative stretch, something tells me Cindy would kick herself for it later. You're branching out into yet another stage. My gosh, I can't believe how busy you are and all the things you do. But you're you're in, uh, taking on the Great White Way, right? Why do they call it that? Oh, mm. I don't know why they because they have a lot of whites. Um, oh, <laughs> it's um, now I'm going, going to do Broadway. Three Penny Opera. Yeah, I'm going to play Jenny, um, the whore with a heart. Jenny, <laughs> isn't she? She's a madam. She worked oh, her I'm way sorry. up. She's no longer just a whore. Okay. She's the boss. Oh, okay. Yes. She owns the joint now. Uh, excellent. Yeah. And you're starring with uh, some some big brothers. Alan names. Cummings. Nellie's doing it. Nellie Mackay. Wow. Um, who's the other girl? Is that, Anna Gaston? Uh, Anna Gaston. I love her. That's, That's it. great. And this other fellow who plays Mr. Peach. Jim Dale. Yes, he's fabulous. Oh my gosh. And um, and Flotilla DeBarge, who. I love. He's one of the drag queens that was in my um, my uh, Hey Now. Oh wow! Video. Hey, girls, just want to have fun. I did it all with the drag queens in '94, and uh, and he. It's it, you know it's kind of fr uh, fun to be with your friends like Nelly and and him and and Alan. I met him on um, on on the Sondheim birthday thing. I don't know on Sondheim's birthday. He just went around. He's town. great. Raising money for the theater, he must have raised a lot because there was right. a lot of birthday parties. But it was it was fun, you know. And, oh, and that's cool. So so is this something that you're gonna are you gonna continue maybe going towards a Broadway stage a little um, bit? Or? Yeah, just a I test? just don't like the I don't like all the music. But this music is is Kurt Vile and Brecht, and it's not mm -hmm. like nails on a blackboard. I guess it could be, but the one thing that attracted me to this role and to this director was we discussed the music and he wanted to go back more towards the 1930 version which is much more welcoming and tavern like singing even though what they're singing about is kind of harsh a harsh reality mm -hmm. it's so yin yang it's done in a way that's welcoming and sing along and you know Mac the knife right and, Mac the knife you know although they've changed it to a translation that they feel is more like what it is in German. I don't know. I don't speak German. Mach the knife. <laughs> yeah, you know, he was, a, he was a bad guy. Yeah. But God knows I love him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to tell everybody if, if you'd like to get tickets, it's a limited engagement, and they can go to your website, cindylopper.com, yes, right? Yes, Well, it's, it's, um, it's the Roundabout Theater, and if you, it's not just Cindy Lauper, you, you can go on the Roundabout. Yes. Well, a lot of people from all over have been calling. Good. And people from Europe, and it's it's odd that you know. Well, I'll tell you, it's a reason to make a trip here. Well, it'll seeing be seeing you on Broadway. I can't wait. Do you know Nelly? No. She's a who? Nelly Mackay. Well, cool. She's great. She's a good gal. Well, good. Good luck with that. And I understand a summer tour next year. We'll look forward to that too. Yes. 
And okay, um, cool. let me just say on the body acoustic before I forget that it's, um, you, I didn't mention all the people that are on that record. Oh, Ani DeFranco, Shaggy, uh, uh, Adam Lazaro from right. Taking Back Sundays, Jeff Beck, and Vivian. Vivian, Vivian oh, Green. Vivian Green, whose voice is amazing. She great? She's uh, River. with Ani DeFranco on Sisters of Avalon. Oh, right, right. So that you could, I did that so that you could embrace different cultures, not, not just one group of women that have to regain their power. It's all of us. I mean, you know. Excellent. So I thought it was all three of us came from so such a diversity that, you know, we're all so different from each other that I thought it would be great. Yeah. You know. All that and a ballad version of Shebop that you cannot miss. <laughs> Gives yes. some, it makes it kind of sad. It's a plaintive. It is. It's a plaintive <laughs> song. <laughs> Which it's is like really... a jewel song. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. She'll be on the next album. Thank you so much for She's hanging great. with me, Cindy. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. Take care. See you next time. Yep.